Max Holloway and Ilya Teporia, you know, guys, this is so unintentionally the best fight build in a meaningful amount of time. The best in Max's career. And the reason it's the best in Max's career, Max is a gentleman. Like, Max is genuinely a nice guy. If, if, if he understood that, that playing a character or being a bad guy would make him more money, he will take less money. But he, he's not going to do that. If, if he understood that we're not in the competitive era right now, we're currently in the entertainment era. Like, like if you could really explain that to him, he's going to let you know he's not interested in your era. He is like the most genuine kind of soul. And I tell you that because it might be hard for you to believe. If you've met him, you know I'm right. But, but if you haven't met him and you watch what he can do, you watch what he's capable of doing to another human being you probably aren't going to understand what a genuinely good guy you've got there. Particularly when the title he's got starts with the word baddest, and then it's got a profanity in there as well. Like, that's just not a part of Max. Now, I believe it is a part of Teporia. I do. I think that Teporia is a super handsome guy who's a stone-cold badass. I was going to say killer. I don't call a guy killer. That's, that's, that's way too strong. But I think that's who Tapori is. I think that's a rough customer right there. And I know where he grew up, and I know about those streets, and I know he didn't have a father in the house. I just understand guys like that that gravitate towards a fight gym. And I also know when he became Mr. Water Bottle, he lost his mind. He wanted to fight right then against the bigger. He knew he'd have been fired. He knew they'd have sent him home, that he wasn't the star, that Patty was the star. He would have fought him anyway if he could have got to him. I just think Tapori is the real deal. I really do. I think he's a real rough guy. And I'm setting that stage for you. I'm setting that stage for you because while Tapori is willing to go out and build a fight and do what needs to be done, he hasn't quite had a partner yet. Like, even the stuff with Mr. Water Bottle and Patty the Batty, I mean, Teporia did everything just right. But what's Patty going to do? I mean, what, what would the advantage be to them getting a, a bigger match when they're in different weight classes? Right? So that died off. And then you bring in Volkanovsky. And Volk, again, that's just not, that's not how he's going to build a fight. Which is interesting if you've been seeing the stuff out on Volk, you saw the thing for the gambling website where he played the old man, and then he stayed in character and walked on the stage like he had a camera. I mean, you saw that stuff? This is, this is incredible theater. But if you saw the gambling one that I'm speaking about, the gam, as great as it was, it gets destroyed by what Volk put out three days ago, where he's the concrete worker. And I grew up in construction, so... Ma ma it's maybe a little bit different how I can appreciate it. You you would value the entertainment, but me, it was so true. There's a guy like that on every site. And he comes in and the whole time, and then he leaves. He doesn't even finish out the day. Like, this was so well done. And when I tell you that, I, I, I tell you because I don't know where the limit is for Volk. Most of our shy guys that can't build a fight, you can't go stick them in the movies. You can't go stick them in commercials. You can't go put them in TV. And if you do, it's going to be a cameo. They're going to smile or something. They got some missing teeth. Like, there's not going to be actually anything there where they can work and read lines and get you, the audience, to believe, like Volk did, whether it's that he was 90 years old or that it was he's on a construction site setting concrete. But Volk can do it. Volk could go in a movie right now, and Volk could carry his end of the script. Yet he doesn't like to do that for MMA. So even though Taporia did everything right, he couldn't really do it against himself. So now we find a very interesting situation. Max Holloway's life dream was never to beat Justin Gaethje, and it was never to beat the BMF champion. Never. Not once that's the spot he found himself in, not the day of that fight, and not even now. Like, if that had been his life dream, even if he reworked it at the last minute, he would now be complete. He's none of those things. His dream, which he let anybody know, including Justin Gaethje and the promoters and the press leading into that fight, was to gain the momentum that he was having a hard time getting at his weight class. He was going to gain the momentum through the respect of leaving his weight 
tackling the giant that everybody said he couldn't beat, grabbing that belt, and going back. All he's ever wanted to do is be the 45-pound champion. He has never flinched. Now, that doesn't mean he's got to deal with Teporia. What I mean is, Max never had heat with Teporia. If anybody else, if Bryce Mitchell had that belt right now, just for example, if Josh Emmett had that belt, just for example, if Volk or Ortega or Uriah had that belt, just for example, that is who Max would have his focus on. It's the belt. It's not the athlete. So wouldn't you know, when Max gets that belt and becomes the hottest thing in our sport, the only guy that doesn't know is him. He doesn't feel that his value has gone up. He doesn't, he doesn't feel that he can swing that needle any harder now. What he feels is that he hopes, like he had hoped before, that he did enough, just like he thought maybe he'd done before, to get a shot at the title that he cares about. And it's such an interesting dynamic. Because if you stood back, and you're able to look at the board. Okay, you're able to stand back. Now, when you're in it, right, when you're so close to the trees, you can't see the forest. But if you can stand back and you can see everything, Taporia needs an opponent. Period. Taporia needs an opponent to the extent that the only one to call out Taporia is O'Malley, who's a 35 pounder. And nobody at 45 said, hey, O'Malley, you can't do the fight. You're a, 30, a 35 pounder. They all stood back like, ah, I wonder if O'Malley's going to get the fight. They, they never spoke up on their own behalf. Not only have they not spoke up on their own behalf, they didn't even speak up to speak up. Like, you know, sometimes you can't speak up because you got a fight signed. Sometimes you can't go, I'm the one and I should get to port because you got a fight signed. You got to get other business. So then you would come out and you would declare that my fight is now for the number one contender. As soon as I get done with him, I'm coming for you. None of those things happened. None. Everybody understood, take your oars out of the water, sit back, wait, and do nothing. Something is bound to happen at 300. And I can assure you guys, had Max not come out on top, no matter how hard it is for you to conceptualize or close your eyes and envision, had Max not come out on top, Aljamain Sterling is sitting in this conversation today, right here, right now. Now, whether Aljo gets the nod or not, he would be the one in the conversation. They were waiting for 300 to be done. Let's see what happens at 300. Whether we shine up Cater or Aljo, it was one of these things. So now when Max, the hottest prospect, competitor in him just wants to go down. He just wants that opportunity. It's the same opportunity he's wanted the whole time. He never changed his tune. Everything is the exact same. For Max. Of course, Max. Can get that fight. Of course he can have that fight. Of course everybody wants that fight. Of course there is no decision maker who's going to step in with a narrative that isn't that fight. You would be stopping a locomotive coming down the train. That's not what promotion is. That is what demotion is. And the reason it's so wonderful is as bad as Deporia needs Max, He's not playing it like that. He understands the art of the deal. Tapori is playing it the only way he should, which is I am king, and I am king because I have the belt. You're saying my name, hoping you did enough to get to me. I don't say your name. I don't care about you. If I beat you, I keep the belt. But guess what, kid? If I don't ever fight you, I keep the belt. Now, that's an interesting attitude. And it's a difficult attitude, and you got to have confidence in your craft. But these two unintentionally have created the current best build to a non-signed fight that I have ever seen in the UFC.